Hello, welcome to tutorial number 12 in a series of beginners Java tutorials from caveofprogramming.com. And in this tutorial, um, we're going to look at multi dimensional arrays in Java. So, one, a one dimensional array um, would be, for example, I could say int array values equals, and then I could specify a bunch of integers here, like this. And the reason this is called a one-dimensional array is because to specify the position of one of the items in this lit, I just need one number or dimension. So I could say, you know, sysout values 2, for example. And uh, here I get my array value. So I'm just using one dimension here to specify this one, one array index. A multi dimensional array uh, would require more than one um, array index to specify the value. So in this tutorial I'm just going to look at two dimensional arrays but you can easily extrapolate this to three or four dimensional arrays if you're completely crazy. Um, so let's have a look at an example of a two dimensional array. So the first difference is to create the variable that will point to the array I need two sets of square brackets like this and then I say let's say I'll call this grid and I'll set this equal to and I open my bracket as before and I'll close it down here and I'll put a semicolon in and now what we're going to have in here well in Java the important thing to realize is that a multi-dimensional array is just an array of arrays. So here each element in this array is an integer. Because this is a two-dimensional array each element in this array will be another array. So for example I could have this one as an element. I could put that in there. And um, because each element is an array and actually each element technically is a reference to an array, um, unlike in C++ say the um, different elements of of this array don't have to be um, the same length. So I could have like two values here, for example, and then I don't know one, two, three, four. I could have four values here, and so on. So this is a multi-dimensional array, and most often probably you want to have the same number of values in each row. But as I say, it's optional. And to refer to values in this, this is basically a table or a grid of numbers, um, what you do is I could say, um, let's say I want to refer to this value. So um, I type grid, which is the name of the array reference here, the, the array variable. And then this is row 0, row 1, row 2. And you need the row first. Because um, if you think of this, if you think of these as being, each of these is an element of the kind of um, bigger array, the outer array, then the first thing you need to do is specify the position of this. So um, in other words, you type the row index first. It's always row column. So here, this is row, um, it's the second row, but because we start numbering from zero, this is array index one. And then, um, again, this is going to be um, this is uh, uh, going to be at index zero within that row, and this is going to be at index one. Um, so here again, it's it's going to be one one. So this means row one, column one. But don't forget, you start numbering from zero. Uh, so zero one for the rows, and then zero one for the columns. Let's output this value. And I should get four. Um, and um, I can also, of course, output, for example, some. Maybe it's less confusing if I output a value that isn't at one one. So let's say this one will be zero and zero one two. So this value is zero two. So if I copy that and output this, I will say zero two. So row zero, column two, and I output that, and I get two, three, four, three again. 
Um, now here, so here I'm um, here I'm initializing the array at the same time that I declare it, and of course I can just create the array first and initialize it later. I could say uh, what about I could use a string, let's say a string array, so um, a two-dimensional array of strings. I call it tets equals, and I say new string. And here I have the number of entries that I want in the sort of outer array. In other words, the number of rows that I want here. So let's have two rows. And then I specify the number of columns that I want in this array. Let's say three. So this is an array of an array of strings, a two-dimensional array of strings, and technically a two-dimensional array of references to strings. And uh, it could, I could output any value in this array of array of strings by saying, let's say, I could have uh, text zero, and then let's output so the zeroth row and first column. And of course, because I haven't set any strings yet, that will be null. And I could, of course, assign values to these strings by saying, let's say, text naught, naught, and one equals hello there, hello there. And let's just put this up here so that I set it before I output it. And you get hello there. Iterating through arrays of strings, uh, iterating through two dimensional arrays of strings or integers or whatever, is of course a little bit more complex than the one dimensional case. Uh, you could use the for loop with a colon style of doing it, but let's, uh, I think it's actually simpler just to stick to for loops with, um, with loop counters for two dimensional arrays. So let, let's look at how you do that. So what you do is first you iterate through the rows and then you iterate through the columns. So you have a nested for loop, a for loop within a for loop. So for the outer array, uh, let's, let's take grid and I'll say for int i equals naught i less than grid dot length as, as if it was a one dimensional array i plus plus. So this is iterating over the rows here. And now I want to iterate over the columns within this. So I say for, and I need to choose a different name for the loop variable here to avoid a conflict. So I'll say for int k equals naught. In fact, just to make it clearer, I could in fact not use i, but I could use, I could call this row. So row, row, um, that's better actually. And then here I could say for int col equals naught, col less than. Now what, what is the dimension of the row that we want to iterate over? Uh, I mean, what's the length of the, the row that I'm iterating over? It's actually going to be grid um, array brackets row dot length and then col plus plus. And of course, as always, you can take a closer look at this code and try to get your head around it on caveobprogramming.com, which is all one word. And let's say I can output now grid and I need row and then the column. And a handy thing to do with arrays uh, to make your output look nice is um, I can change print ln to print. So instead of printing each number here on its own line, I can print them all out one after the other on the same line. And I can just print out here, actually, I just add here some space after each number. Or if you put slash t in quotes, that will output a tab character. So I'm just adding concatenating space here to, the, to this string that I'm outputting. Well, it's not actually a string, it's an integer, but Java will understand that um, I want to uh, create a string here. And then after each row, so within the outer loop and not within the inner loop, I want to output a new line. So I can just output a empty sysout.println. And this, this is quite complex, but um, just play around with it, look at the code, try and change it, and um, you'll soon get a hang. 
notice if I output that, it's outputting my grid of numbers here. Nicely, nicely formatted as here. Okay, I mean that's that's about it for um, multi-dimensional arrays. I probably should mention the case where, for example, you could do something like string array, 2D array, uh, let's call it words equals new string. And I could just specify only the first um, dimension here. I could say that's going to that's gonna be two. So I'm going to have two rows in my array and leave the last one empty. And what that would do was it would not set each row to anything. So each row would be null. If I do sys out, uh, sys out words zero, for example, that will output null here. So the last array index here is allowed to be empty and then you have to set it manually, uh, so to speak, to um, an array. So to, to you have to set up your sub, sub arrays one by one. So I could say words zero equals new string array. Let's give it a dimension of three like this um, and then I'm able to say things like words row zero and then column columns are now within this array uh, so I could say one for example equals either and then I could output that copy and sys out control space for the autocomplete and I can and this will output either. So um, okay that's it for this tutorial quite complex and in the next tutorial unless I think of something else important that I haven't told you meanwhile we will look at classes and objects and you can find this code on caveofprogramming.com so do visit that and please click like if you like the video and I hope you'll join me next time. So until then, happy coding.